Hello, Emmanuel here. Welcome to a new video of the Know Your Node series. Today, I will talk about the float filter random grayscale. This is an extremely important node and one of the first you really need to learn how to use when you start using Substance Designer, especially for your tile materials like floors, rocks, wood planks, bricks, etc. Since it will help you add variation to your tiles in many ways, I think this is one of the most used nodes by every pro substance maker. To use it, you need some splatter shapes or tiles like the ones you get with a tile generator or sampler. They don't need to be uniform or squared. For example, you can also use a cell string node. The important thing is that you need to have a black and white map with the edges of the shapes well defined. Otherwise, you might find unwanted shapes or errors. Then you need to connect the shapes to a float field node and the float field to a float field to random grayscale. And you'll get a result similar to this one. The node doesn't have any input parameters, but if you change the node's random seed, the grayscale values will change. With the map ready, let's see how we can use it. There are four main ways to use the node, as a height variation, as an intensity mask, as a pattern breaker, or as a random mask. Let's begin with the height variation. Once you have your tiles, it's pretty common to multiply them by the float field to random grayscale. That way you can get a different height per tile. Remember from the distance node video that it's better to expand the float field to random grayscale result before using it, by connecting the original tiles to the mask input of a distance node, then connecting the random grayscale to the source input. Increase the maximum distance and set the combine to only source. That way we won't get weird line artifacts. The second way to use the node is as an intensity mask. For example, if we want to apply a noise to the tiles, we can just multiply it and in the opacity input of leveling node, we can connect the random grayscale node. As you can see, the darker tiles will get less noise than the brightest ones, giving a different intensity per tile and helping with variation. The third way to use it is as a pattern breaker. For example, imagine again that you want to apply a moisture noise to the tiles. The common way to do it will be to blend it directly. The issue with that approach is that the noise is continuous in the neighboring tiles, which is not realistic most of the times. An easy way to fix it is to connect the noise to a directional warp input and the random grayscale to the intensity input. Now increase the intensity a lot in the directional warp by 100 or more and use the random angle. That way you'll break the noise on a per tile basis and now the neighbors will be different, which is a lot more realistic. And the fourth most common way to use this node is as a random mask. For example, sometimes we want to add some cracks to our tiles but we don't want them everywhere, only in some of them. An easy way to achieve that is to connect a histogram select to the random grayscale. Increase the contrast, set the range, and play with the position. As you can see, as you move the position, the selected tiles change. Now, if you move the range, the lower the value, the fewer the selected tiles. And if we increase the value, more tiles are selected. Now we can use this mask as the opacity input of a blend node, and the cracks will only appear in some of the tiles. Now, here is a final tip I learned directly from the master Josh Lynch, during my mentorship with him a couple of years ago, and it's something I also use all the time. So let's do a quick shout out to the Mentor Coalition. Not a sponsored video, but I really learned a lot from them. Instead of using multiple float field to random grayscales with different random seeds, in order to get different masks, use the float field to random color, and then add the RGBA split. That way, instead of having only one mask, you'll get four, so it's easier to add more variation. And if you want to add even more variation, you can connect the outputs to Instagram shift nodes, and change the position. This variation is important, otherwise the same tiles will get all the different effects you add to your substance all the time. Well, that's all for now. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you next time.